All right, for this video, we are continuing with our TurboTax 2022 tutorials. And in this video, we are specifically gonna look at how to enter information from a 1099 div. So 1099 divs are uh, filed by your broker to report the amount of dividend income paid into your accounts. So we've got a sample 1099 div here. We'll come back to this a little later. Uh, but as far as topics, we want to cover in this video uh, we're going to look at the consolidated form 1099 specifically the 1099 div we're going to talk a little bit about um, ordinary dividends and the two components of ordinary dividends we have non-qualified and qualified so how do those differ and we also have some capital gain distributions on our 1099 div for for john so we'll discuss those, see how those are entered, and then exempt interest dividend income. Okay, so again, this is a continuation of the previous videos. So we're working with the same taxpayer here, John Q. Taxpayer. So we've already entered uh, these items above in bullet points one through four, right? His W-2, uh, his student loan interest. We've entered the cryptocurrency gains, losses that he had during the year. We've entered the uh, gains, losses from his stocks. And so now we're moving on to the dividend. So last bullet point here, right, just to summarize very, very uh, quickly here, he's got a, a brokerage account, right? Same one he used to trade the stocks. And the dividend paying stocks that he's invested in are RICs, right? So RICs is short for regulated investment companies. Now, why is this important uh, that we're making that distinction? Well, because it, it lends to why is 1099 div kind of looks like this. Right, so the 1099 div has a number of different line items, right? So 1A all the way down here through 15. Okay, and so the way RICs work, RICs are publicly traded companies generally, uh, and they are taxed as corporations, but when they distribute dividend income to their shareholders, they kind of get a pass through treatment. In other words, when you receive a dividend from a RIC, uh, it's not all just ordinary dividends, right? It can be recharacterized as other certain items, right? So in John's case here, when he received his dividend, uh, the broker then recharacterizes certain amounts between ordinary and qualified dividends, uh, capital gain distributions here on line 2A, and then he's got some exempt interest dividends here on line 11 for $2, right? And so if you find that you're invested in RICs, when you get a dividend income uh, payment, it's not all just gonna be treated as, you know, ordinary dividend with a qualified portion. You might see other, other you know, other line items here that uh, can be displayed, and that's because you're kind of getting this pass-through uh, tax treatment. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the return. Uh, again, we're working with 2022 TurboTax, the self-employed version. Uh, this is the online version, right? This is not the downloaded version on our desktop. So in order to enter the, the investment income, we're working with the federal tab over here and then wages and income. So if we drill down onto wages and income and we scroll down to the investments and savings section, this is where we can enter interest, dividends, or 1099B details, so we're working with dividends on 1099D, uh, 1099DIV, sorry. All right, so we'll go into uh, this section here. Now, it pulls up the section uh, which illustrates all the items we've already entered, right? So we've already entered the 1099B for the stock sales, uh, the 1099K items for the personal sale items, and so scroll all the way down and click the plus add investments section and then we can continue on from here. Now, like the previous entries for the stocks uh, and the crypto investments, you do get an option to import the data directly, right? And that's a nice thing with TurboTax is if you have a broker uh, that partners with TurboTax, so Robinhood or TD Ameritrade, you can log in uh, through TurboTax here and they can download that uh, data automatically for you certainly very helpful right uh, certainly uh, makes it a lot easier to prepare the return uh, less manual data entry however again because this is a not a real person not a real return uh, not a real 1099 div it's just a example we're going to have to go ahead and enter everything manually here so uh, go on to the next screen again we're working with dividend income here and then go ahead and click continue and again, it gives us an option here, uh, download directly from the bank, 
uh, or upload from the computer. I can upload the PDF, JPEG, or, or um, a PNG file. And I'm just going to type it in myself, right? Okay, so next screen. So where do we get this from? So, uh, you know, enter the name of the financial institution, the broker. In our case here, you know, again, this is not a real company. So the payer here is just brokerage company, LLC. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and enter brokerage uh, company, LLC. That's fine. Now, dividends and gains, right? So the first screen here, notice on the 1099 div, there's a lot of line items and a lot of numbers. The first turbo tax screen only covers the first three, right? So we've got total ordinary, qualified, and total capital gain distributions. The total ordinary is 205, qualified is 185, and then $6.50 for capital gain distribution. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter those items. 205, uh, 185 is qualified, and then six dollars and fifty cents is capital gain distributions. Now, how how are these uh, items taxed differently? Well, ordinary dividend is, is just that; it's the cash dividend payment that goes into your account. Qualified dividends is the portion of the ordinary. So, when we talk about ordinary dividends, there's two pieces: there's the qualified and the non-qualified piece. The 205 here, we're saying that 185 of it is qualified, so the difference, the $20 difference, is the non-qualified piece. Qualified dividends get that preferential lower tax rate, the long-term uh, tax, the long-term capital gains tax rate, versus non-qualified is just ordinary income. So 20 bucks is going to be just ordinary income, but 185 we might be able to get that reduced long-term capital gains rate. Capital gain distributions are taxes at the long-term rate. So we'll see on the on the Schedule D where these numbers pop out uh, for the, the capital gain distribution amount. Now, it also asks us here, right, my form has info in other boxes. It, it, it's, I think that's misleading. I don't think it's really that uncommon, frankly, but uh, we'll go ahead and check this and then start entering some of the other items. So now you can see we've got all the other options for the different types of income. Okay, so if we go back to uh, the brokerage statement, the other item that we have, everything else is zero except for line 11, right? Line 11, exempt interest dividends. So exempt interest dividends are exempt from federal income taxes, right? And so that's what's nice is, um, you know, you, you you can get to, you might pay tax at, a, at the state level, uh, but it's basically municipal bond interest. So muni bonds, um, muni ETFs, the, the interest or the dividend payments from those are generally exempt from federal income taxes. So line 11, exempt interest dividends, we've got $2 to enter there. So I'm going to go back, line 11. Uh, oh, so they've got different boxes here. Interesting. Well, yeah, so box 11 is missing. Very interesting. I wonder why that is. They must have updated the uh, the uh, the format. Well, nevertheless, what we are looking for is exempt interest dividends, right? So again, very important to uh, not just look at the box of the line item, right? Make sure we're we're putting it into the appropriate category. So exempt interest dividends. We had two dollars there. That's fine. Um. And so let's just double check here. Nothing else, right? No state tax info, nothing like that. That's fine. Obviously, enter all the information that is available on the 1099. If it's all zeros, then just go ahead and leave it blank. Um, so uh, no information here on state taxes, right? No FACA filing issues. So we'll go ahead and hit continue. Uh, do these uncommon situations apply? A portion is US government interest? No. Uh, we uh, ESOPs, employee stock ownership programs, no, we don't have any of that kind of issue. Uh, some qualified dividends are from securities that didn't meet the holding period. Now, you're not going to know that on, on this broker's statement, but what they're saying there is, look, in order to get the qualified dividend treatment here, you have to have owned the security for a certain number of days. And so if your broker is telling us these are qualified, then, then just go with what the broker is saying. Um, I think what TurboTax is trying to highlight here is that, well, if these are dividend payments from closely held stock uh, that's not publicly traded, you know, maybe you should know better that, you know, some of these qualified dividends don't actually qualify 
as qualified dividends, so they should be non-qualified income. In our case, nothing you know that unusual applies here, so I'm just going to hit no, and then carry on forward. Okay, so which is uh, which state is your two dollars exempt interest income from? So our our broker's statement didn't. Um, specify so I think it's okay to just put multiple states the reason why this is important is because some states will tax the income so again remember municipal bond interest um, is not taxable at the federal level but it could be taxed at other states so uh, because it's only two dollars I'm not going to worry about it too much but if you look at your brokerage statement and they do tell you right so they will tell you okay the exempt interest dividends there might be a footnote or another supplementary statement where they tell you, okay, the two dollars came from this specific state. When they, when you have that information, go ahead and enter it. For this example, because it's only two dollars and it's such a nominal noun, I'm just going to put multiple states. Okay, so now we've got that entered. I'm going to scroll down, hit confirm, and then we'll go ahead and look at uh, the tax return and see how all these numbers um, made their way on there. Uh, just like we've done in the previous videos. So I'm going to pull this up, go to the Print Center. Okay, your print return. All right, so I'm going to scroll down here. So this is the first page of the return. So the items that were updated uh, for this page were the dividend income, right, and then a few other items, uh, tax exempt and the capital gain distributions, which we'll see on um, uh, Schedule D. But you can see here now the uh, lines 2A, we have our tax exempt interest there, $2. Qualified dividends, ordinary dividends, right, there's the 205 and the 185. And then if we continue to scroll all the way down to Schedule D, we should be able to find the capital gain distributions. Remember, that was $6.50. And there we have it. Line 13, capital gain distribution, $7. All right, so I hope that was helpful. Uh, obviously, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. Happy to help wherever I can. And uh, I look forward to seeing you again on the next video. Thank you.